Hey guys, if batch transcoding your media is a regular part of your workflow, you're gonna love some of the small but really useful enhancements found in the Compressor 4.6.1 update. In this video, I'm gonna show you how they work and why you should use them. I have Compressor launched and I've imported a 3840 by 2160 UHD clip that I wanna output in a cinematic widescreen format and a square Instagram format with a LUT applied. In the settings menu, I'll open the video sharing services group, then duplicate the 4K setting. The duplicate is placed inside the custom group where I can modify its encoding parameters. First, I'll rename this custom preset and call it 4K widescreen. In the video properties inspector, I'll choose custom LUT from the camera LUT menu. Then navigate to the LUT on my system and choose open. For the frame size, I'll choose custom 2.35 to 1, which is a common cinema aspect ratio. For the width, I'll enter 3840. The height is calculated automatically. Another welcome new feature is the ability to output HEVC 10-bit movies with 422 color sampling. This is huge if you want to maintain all the color depth of your original clips. This feature requires Mac OS 12.3 running on Macs with Apple Silicon. From the codec menu, I'll choose HEVC, then set the profile to 10-bit color 422. With all that set up, I'll drop my custom preset onto the job. The viewer loads the source clip in its native state. To see how the movie will look when output, I'll go to the view menu where there's a new set of options. Currently, the viewing mode is set for source only, but by choosing source and output, I'll get a side-by-side -side view with the original source clip on the left and the modified source clip on the right. Going back to the menu, Compressor now displays the aspect ratio of your movie before its output. Previously, you could not see this, and only after outputting your movies would you discover any issues. So this is a super useful feature that will save me both time and potential cursing. Notice as I choose between source and output aspect ratios, the widescreen clip looks stretched and slightly distorted. This is because the original frame height was 2160, and now the image is being squished into a new height of 1634. Now that might be fine if you don't want to lose any pixel data at the top and bottom of the frame, but I would prefer cropping the source clip instead. I'll delete that preset from the job and make a few modifications. With the preset selected, I'll set the frame size to automatic. Using the cropping menu, I'll set the crop to Panavision 2.35 to 1, then drag the modified preset onto the job. The widescreen crop is applied, but this time we see no distortion because the crop is simply applying a center crop on the frame. The area that will be cropped out falls outside the cropping rectangle in the viewer. There are also new options for viewing the background, including a checkerboard pattern, which will show you the areas of transparency in the image. I'll have more to say about this when I show you my workflow for exporting motion graphics that include an alpha channel. With the first preset created, it's super easy to create a square preset. I'll duplicate my widescreen preset and name it 4K Square. In the cropping section, I'll set this to 1 by 1, then drag my new preset onto the job. The viewer now shows me the same clip with 1 by 1 center cropping applied. And here's a bonus tip. You can quickly create a preset group that will allow you to apply both presets to the same job. I'll click the plus button in the lower left, then choose New Group. I'll name the group Wide and Square, then drag my custom presets into the group. From the desktop, I'll drag another 4K clip from the same camera roll into the batch window, then drag the group onto the job. Both presets are applied to the new clip, and I can start my batch. I should also mention that transcoding performance in Compressor has been optimized for the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra on the new Mac Studio. However, you can also apply this same preset group to your clips in Final Cut Pro and export them from there. Here are the steps. In Final Cut Pro, open the Preferences window by pressing Command Comma and select the Destinations pane. I'll drag the Compressor Settings icon into the sidebar, then select the custom group I created in Compressor. I'll then rename the bundle Wide and Square, then close the Preferences window. Next, I'll select the clips or projects I want to export then from the file menu choose Share Clips and select the Wide and Square Preset Bundle. I'll click Next, choose a destination, then Share the Movies. 
Mac OS notifies me when the batch is complete. I'll click the Show button to take me to the destination folder. Here are the movies that were exported in both widescreen and square format. Let's look at a few more small enhancements that in my book are really useful. In the batch window, I've imported movies that are in the wrong orientation. This can happen when you shoot video with your iPhone in portrait orientation, then during shooting you decide you want to shoot in landscape orientation. As a result, the recorded video will maintain the orientation you started shooting with. Now this can be addressed on the iPhone itself or in the Mac Finder, but Compressor gives you a few more options. I'll drop an HD preset on the job, then scroll down to the cropping, padding, and rotation settings. At the bottom, there are some new options for rotating or flipping the image. I'll choose 90 degrees to correct the orientation. And if I want, I can also choose between three flip options. I'll choose horizontal, because why not? Next, I'll save this as a custom preset by dragging it over the word custom. Then name the preset Rotate and Flip. The last step is to apply the preset to the remaining clips, then start the batch and go get a sandwich. For this last feature, I'm going to start in Motion, where I have open an animated lower third graphic that I modified from one of the built-in templates. Pressing Shift-T reveals that this clip has transparency. I want to export an HEVC version that includes the alpha channel, which will create a file so small that it can be emailed. I'll select the project icon in the layers list, then in the properties inspector set the background to transparent. From the file menu, I'll choose Send to Compressor. In Compressor, I'll select the job, then enable Checkerboard to verify that the graphic appears without the background. Viewing the transparency on your clips will require macOS Monterey 12.3 or later. In order to output a movie that contains the transparency, I'll need to create a preset by duplicating the HD 1080 preset, which happens to match the project properties of my motion project, then name it HEVC with Alpha. In the inspector, I'll set the codec to HEVC, then place a check next to Preserve Alpha. The last step is to set the location for the job, then start the batch. Once rendered, I'll jump into the completed pane, drill down to the file, then click the magnifying glass icon to take me to the movie in the finder. Looking at the file size, it's only 454 kilobytes. I'll press the spacebar to look at it in quick view. So, what do you think of the new features? Leave your comments below. And as always, we appreciate a sub, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.